Well, we had a really nice, quiet night last night. Uh, parked up here. It is gorgeous, but it's very cold, and it was so windy in the night. But uh, the views are quite spectacular. It was an old vehicle that went past, but not not that would bother us. It's been a good stop, really good stop. Fantastic views as well. Uh, on our way to Alta now, uh, hopefully to see these uh, carvings and then we'll be heading down then uh, through Sweden. So we're not gonna look at the churches. There's nothing special about the two that were on the way. We've just set ourselves a direct route south and uh, see how we get on. Uh, we are struggling a little bit with the batteries. So we, we get the heat in on at night and then we, we have to, we can't leave it on all night. We have to turn it off simply because the, the battery just won't cope with it but uh, tell them there's somebody camping down there you can see such a big difference has made only uh, two days ago when we was driving this road going up to Nordcap over this slight like, barren wasteland um, there was no snow and ice now we've got uh, snow and ice it's a total change of landscape in just uh, a couple of days. It was bitterly cold last night though, I must have been. what we have whether it's snow rain sun the landscape's just fantastic stunning wow look just look at all of them seen so many deer yeah. we're being uh, plagued with deer again Christy's trying to rush them on oh, why, why don't you go slower you can't, they can't run any faster oh Luke how cute are they Little tails. Oh, oh how cute are they? So cute. Okay, we've noticed this um, caravan. Uh, obviously, just is kitted out for the winter, not for anything else. <laughs> it's on skis, look. <laughs> Uh, man, it's seen better days, I think. <laughs> oh dear, look at that. <laughs> Caravan on skis, seen it all now. Uh, have a look at the, the ancient carvings. Ancient carvings or sculptures. I think they are, I'm not really sure what this bit is. It's outside of the building. Uh, we're just walking our way down so <laughs> we'll have a look at this um, first see what this is it's uh, not really anything of uh, just a bit of weird art that don't know what that is at all not got a clue anyway let's uh, go and take a look as a globe 
not really uh, sure of its importance but uh, like Christine's just pointed out she's very clever of her very it is the uh, world but, uh, this is a world UNESCO heritage site so we'll uh, take a look at what it says on the sign here uh, I'll have a tell read what it says. It says Alters Rock Art is inscribed by the UNESCO World Heritage List as a cultural heritage site of outstanding universal value. It is unique in its great variation and vast number of figures, the most ancient of which are 7,000 years old. Our mission at the World Heritage Rock Art Centre, Alter Museum, is preservation, education and research with respect to our rock art and Alter's natural and cultural history. The rock carvings are Heshma Luft, are accessible to the public in the snow-free parts of the year where our exhibitions allow you to experience Alters rock art and history through all seasons. You need a ticket or special permission to access the walkway. The ticket includes a guided leaflet and entry to the exhibition. So there's a monkey bike here but I think that they call it a mini bike. <laughs> Arctic cat. That's quite cool actually. But it is a monkey bike to us or to me very cool um, well, there's actually a motorbike museum there so we will be taking a look at that and that's a bit of a shop I must admit some nice knives so, fantastic um, that bike exhibition as well uh, I don't know if you remember Mark Mark Hewitt he had uh, one of these old Jalera on there that was his bike that he had it's quite cool that. This isn't what we came for, but I remember the puck, the puck maxi. Don't remember the M50 cross. you produce knitting machines uh, I do like that picture that is a cool picture must have been quite big around here then for their bikes look at them now they're what you call bike boots and oh sorry and um, some skis on that one look to help it keep it upright uh, they've got that listed as a war bike Your held on there, look, a little handle on it. On the CB100. Nice 
1972 but I don't expect to see bikes here, I must admit. Look at that, that is a cool picture. Yeah. I love the fact that you can hear some little moped ticking over in the background that that I love I just love that picture it's on the opposite side <laughs> that is a cool picture I suppose it kind of proves that bikes are for everyone Snow. What about that for a picture? <laughs> brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Good little museum. I think it's just a temporary one, this one. So it, it was only here for this year, then it'll be gone. It's a shame, but whoever owns these bikes, very nice. There's a Norwegian bike, then Tempo. Very cool. We're going to do the uh, inside of the museum first and then we'll uh, look at the outside one. So this, this takes back to about 6,000 years ago, 7,000 years ago. tools and garments from what people left. I mean, there are a fair few of them are to do with fishing and fishing hooks and spears.
these are typical, these are about 2,000 years old, typical carvings for this area. figures on this road, these are eroded by water. It's found in the 1990s, but the image is probably six, seven thousand years old. Stone was named after Astrid Lindgren, a popular child, discovered in the 1950s, about 20 kilometres north of here. It's 45,000 years old. Area, people were playing play from 1862. workers that they use for digging and finding things in the area. Indigenous people, the 
position more to us. salmon reels. Uh, they're old length these are. Some more reels and flies. Look at these. Salmon flies. things that uh, people would have used traditionally for fishing. Okay, Sami are the indigenous people of uh, Norway. So they're like the, from the, the tribal people. So these are from the Sami people. So 2,000, 4,000 years ago, it was uh, common to blend in asbestos with the clay to make the salix more resilient. And they were used for storing food. Oh, that's good. So, although asbestos, we know how dangerous it is, but eating food prepared in pots that contain asbestos is harmless. Well, there's a pot being used for that. There's some, uh, we've been there, stayed the church, come on. Yep. some uh, video of the Sami people. There's some sledging mitts there. Summer boots. traditional Sami people so they were the people that lived hunted in this area there's a fox trap there Thanks. Uh, we've seen inside the museum now we're taking a a walk around now to have a look and see some of the actual rock cave uh, rock carvings 
so hopefully it's a pleasant walk and uh, not too many hills I think it's about to get round a fair bit of it, it's about three kilometers, 3.2 kilometers, which is probably just over two miles. Uh, anyway, we'll see how we get on. Okay, when these were discovered in the 1970s they were painted red originally so that that seems to have gone now uh, they are difficult to see I, I don't know if you can make that out I've tried to zoom in as best I can there are quite a few on here but they are very very difficult to see but I think I think that is probably the best one to pick out there's another one there and there so I will try and show you what it what we've got as a drawing so that one there is that one there I hope that kind of helps you find them views are quite spectacular as well So this one is, uh, is there anything on that one? So here, let's have a, a look. So this is B. Uh, I'm trying to, if I hold it, it's just to help us try and find some of the carvings on them so I think <laughs> Christy said I think it's people with a vivid imagination mm. uh, uh, no, you zoom in your fingers so we can get Mm. You can zing it, can't you? Zing in. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to try and uh, use my use the pole, and uh, I'm not sure whether we can make some of these out or not I find I'm, I'm going to be honest I'm finding it really really difficult to see them should have been here a couple of thousand years ago I think to be fair um, Christine says she's found some that are a bit better so we'll, we'll move around and at all well now we're talking So, these ones are, uh, now whether somebody's painted over these, I don't know, I'll have to look that up, so I'll do that now. These um, carvings that we've got here that they actually tell stories but that this particular one 
which has got the which is in effect in, in effect a fence that goes around the reindeer is the oldest carving in the world of a, a um, like a fence that's been built to hold the reindeer but apparently the they, they supposed to tell stories of possibly true events and mythological things but I, I find that quite difficult to believe but who am I to know they are supposed to show everything that goes on with all seasons so this is uh, what they class as a, a, a male on top of a female but it is I must admit it is brilliant this is obviously man hunting there's a man hunting again they're uh, fantastic pictures what a deer elk I think they're bear as well that are on there Notice there's footsteps as well so I think that's part of what the migration process that they're showing there's a, a couple of men up there I don't know if you can see those they're not colored red but this is what would have been how they were painted I I'm, I'm don't know whether this has been where somebody's gone over it or not I have no idea but uh, on these here where it's showing us the the deer and the elk uh, there's a man hunting. I mean, these are six to seven thousand years old. And uh, I mean, in this series of rock carvings, there's reindeer, elk, bear. Halibut, whale, dog, wolf, seal, hare, fox, beaver, salmon, fish, great orc, goose, swan and cormorant, all, all within here somewhere. I mean there's some that are uh, I presume fishing I think uh, they're on a boat I think he's got a net there's another one up there with a bow what looks like on a boat so these are obviously going out to sea to do things not sure what this fella's doing difficult to really make out what animals they are depicting but uh, it's what the experts say they are 
uh, here's some fishing one which is a uh, quite a cool one really um, I'll see if I can extend my pole a bit more so there's a, a boat fishing line with a fish on it if you can see that I think that's uh, it's possibly a bear as well I'm saying a bear because we know that bear fish these have no colour so they're, they're quite difficult to pick out but um, there's one I think you can might just be able to make it out and there's another there are several more on here but they're they're not easy no. to find so they are difficult apparently if you look at them in different light if you get the light in the right place they uh, they look like they're dancing and moving, apparently. But it's all about light conditions, I think. Okay, that one there is supposed to be a goose. The one there, I don't know if you can see it, uh, not the coloured in bit, the uh, well, the other one that's filled in is a swan. Uh, that one looks like a, we've cut to me, looks like a turtle with a long yeah, neck, turtle. is actually a cormorant. And that's a, a, a man or a person that's captured a large bird with his bare hands. It's flapping its wings to escape. Could be a large goose or perhaps a great orc. This is a, a boat at sea. It's got a big gash in its hull, apparently. They're really, they they are really really good I must admit it's better when they're painted red which one we on now some line I mean there's hunters I think they're hunters on a boat I think they're supposed to be more hunters on a boat and boats this seems to be more about fishing this uh, all these carvings than anything else with boats and man Yeah, 
they are much more difficult to see. They can make what I've made. But uh, we can make them out now. I hope you can make them out on the uh, video. Some of them are very difficult to see. I think for stretching your uh, imagination, we're talking about being set within the no, northern lights, which is like the greens and purples that are on there. But no, I think that's uh, stretching your imagination a little bit. But they are cool. They are really good. Uh, there's lots of them. I think that's the uh, thing, there's loads and loads of them, so, oh, wow, isn't it? yeah, that's a bear, I think. Yeah. the uh, backdrop so it's really pretty around here okay these are some of the last carvings that were ever done in this area and there's something very different about these ones there's a I don't know if you can make it out but there's a large boat there they reckon there's about 30 people on them you only got them in southern Scandinavia there'd be another one somewhere um, the thought is that are these people that are coming in peace or are they warlike because it's something that's very different Here's another one. So it's large vessels like that were the only ones that were left. Uh, were the ones that came from the south. And one. these are the most recent carvings. And they're all depicting lots of people coming this way. And these are the last ones, so was there a war? I don't think anybody knows. But I'm reading what it says. It says these are the last rock carvings made in Alta. After 5,000 years, they had come to an end. Gone was the sound of rhythmic chiseling in the stone and the voice of the people who gathered around. Peace and quiet descended on the rocks. This did not happen overnight, but was a gradual process. Over the whole of Scandinavia, people stopped carving their stories on the rocks. Nobody knows why, but there was no longer a need for it. Perhaps there were new ways of expressing their thoughts about the world they were a part of. But it does seem very strange that the last ones are of southern Scandinavians with larger boats. So. There's some of the older carvings again. So. There's a man you could just make out down there and reindeer again. Reindeer fish seem to play a big part of it. There's uh, more here. But they are in an absolutely beautiful setting. But <laughs> Isn't Norway as a country a beautiful setting? I mean, the views are absolutely spectacular. And then we've had a chance to see things like this. So, I'll uh, just the camera. There you go. 
that's a, another boat more boats the first one seemed to be more about the land I think that's a fish yeah yeah I would say that is a fish more humans boats so appears quite a lot of them were reindeer and elk and such like in one area and then more of the fish although there's reindeer there now <laughs> whether these all come out on the video or not and it just shows close-ups of stone I have no idea but uh, we'll see but very very cool and uh, we're just coming up to the what are in effect going to be the last stones we think so these are the last carvings that we can actually show you if there's any on here and, uh, I don't think there is so that's the carvings of Alta absolutely absolutely fantastic apologize for the camera work I was trying to do it on a, a long arm that we've got uh, we're still in Alta uh, we're coming for a quick look at this cathedral it was only built in 2013 um, I think they call it the Northern Lights Cathedral so it's a shall we say a very very modern one so, uh, a bit weird though for a cathedral to be fair because it's shut on a Saturday and a Sunday so we, we kind of think that it's more more about making money than um, actual services because it's a strange thing to be closed on a Sunday however we think it's worth a look it's very different uh, we are in Alta so it kind of makes sense for us to do that and then we'll be uh, heading south then after we've got some provisions so well <laughs> we even charge you here for looking at a film of the northern lights which I don't think we'll be doing we just want to uh, go in and have a look around the church we've seen the northern lights numerous times so we don't need their best pictures hi No, just the church. Thank you. Yeah, they're quite good these. Yeah, they're quite good these. They're uh, DJI action cameras. Very good quality. And they do under the water. And they uh, they're good in the uh, 
really cold conditions. I'm busy, sir. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Wow. So this is a modern church. in mirror made by the artist Peter Branders from Denmark. It's cast in bronze, that 4.3 metres high. Weighs about two tonnes. shades of blue with a basin of clear glass. different very different okay the font's just been turned on but if it look on my and these solid brass as well. It will have been in that was closed on a Saturday and Sunday and uh, it was 50 knock to get in which is about three or four quid um, or 
<laughs> we paid, um, I think it was 100 knock, and you get a Northern Lights show, but it's not really for us that. It'd have been quite cool if you could have gone up there, but uh, you can't. So, uh, anyway, we'll be working our way now. I think we might take a little walk down this street, see what that is that's further down. Looks a very modern town, Alta. Um, very quiet town, how that? Doesn't seem to be uh, a lot of uh, people around. Um, <laughs> look at these for bike stands. How cool are they? So, I presume when it rains, you can. I presume you can get your seat underneath it and uh, your seat don't get wet. I suppose that would be what that would be if you can uh, push it a bit further forward. That's quite cool. Very different. Not so what this is, that's finish. So, finish for what? I don't know. Not really sure. Start. Start of what though? Doesn't really tell you. Very strange. I was just saying to Christine what that actually reminds me of, and when you have a corned beef tin and you have that key and you wind it round, that's kind of what that looks like. It's just what it reminds me of. Uh, kids play areas again that's really soft and spongy that stuff that they have there they always seem to have great play areas for kids also in a lot of Europe um, they play a lot of beach volleyball as well so you often see these courts for beach volleyball Not something we really play. So, not really sure who he is. Uh, yeah. Seems a very quiet town. did make a mistake it is closed on a Saturday it's closed on a Sunday for visitors but there is a, a worship 11. at 11 o'clock so uh, paying it a bit of an injustice there <laughs> south because we're not going to see them churches now we'll drive down and when we, we reach the sort of Swedish Finnish border we follow that border all the way down to the coast and then we run pretty much most of the way down the coast of Sweden
we've been travelling south now and uh, <laughs> the weather's been pretty, really awful. It's been like this, very misty, wet, rainy, cold, not particularly nice day at all. Anyway, uh, we're about to cross the border now from Norway into Finland. So this, this the, there's like a bit that juts out um, over the top of Sweden. We're about to cross into uh, Finland onto that. Now, because we're not doing the church. In 600 anymore, meters, continue on to Ruijanti, Route 93. Because we're not doing the. Um, yeah, the churches anymore. We're going to follow the border. So we kind of scoot across Finland, across this narrow bit. And then just as we get to the border, we're going to... Um, This that sticks out, and then follow the Swedish Finnish border, and we should probably stay just inside uh, Finland. Told. No. time difference for us being in Finland even though we'll be following the border uh, once we get across this bit we'll be following the border between uh, Finland and Sweden as soon as we cross the border back into Sweden it'll be just an hour's time difference between us and yourselves but at the moment we're now two hours different Finland. in Finland now well as you know because we crossed the border we're near a place called Muoni we're just past there uh, this is our park for the night so uh, hopefully we'll have a, a quiet night and but we'll see you never know it is a Friday night uh, very overcast very overcast 